Changing gears a little bit, I would like to talk about the business of barrel racing, the business of raising horses, the business of rodeoing, because you're a very savvy businesswoman. Your family are very savvy business people, uh, but that's maybe a side we don't talk about as much. Yeah. So what would you say you have learned about making this your career, your profession, you know, you're seeking to master this and there's a business element to that. Um, just what can you share about that and kind of your philosophies around the business side of this? I would have to say you to be successful and you have to find a a side of it that makes money mm -hmm. it doesn't all have to make money all the time mm -hmm. um you can have sides of this business that are a little more hobby like um the breeding side for me is that way mm -hmm. because i have one whole brood mare and may have a baby once a year or may skip a year and so that's something i can afford to put money into but i can do that because the rodeo side for me makes money mm -hmm. constantly mm -hmm. so as long as that keeps making money i can afford the other side ventures the the middle the jackpot land where those you know younger horses are developing that is doing well to where it can afford to pay an entry fee to a big futurity every once in a while so to keep a balance you have to have some area that makes money and like i said you don't have to be hardcore about it to where it's all lucrative because I understand this is still horses and they still cost dollars and you're still going to have to take risk and I I do really appreciate taking risks I think that's really important in developing any business so I'm not going to be scared to do that mm -hmm. but I just want to make sure that I'm stable enough to do that first so if I'm set up to take a risk then perfect I can dabble in this direction I can go this way and so just finding out what works for you and I believe it changes from what I here over time um, you may be in the training side for a while you may be in the breeding side you may be towards the end of your career where you're giving back or you may be want to rodeo and live on the road full time and I mean I'm in between I'm like I come home in August every year like I love rodeoing but I've never even been to the northwest like it's just you know you you kind of find what works for you and what fits your schedule and your likes and um, also just knowing that there's more to life than horses and rodeoing like that is what makes money but I don't have to be completely immersed in it like 24 7 there needs to be some time to pull back and do other things so I try and stay really well-rounded business-wise I want to have other things I have my hand in mm -hmm. because I like to stay diversified because in the end my rodeoing depends on me and a horse and all six of our legs staying perfect <laughs> and that's hard um you, you just kind of want to have other plans so maybe your um your diversity is within the sport of barrel racing still but it doesn't rely on you being physically healthy I think that works just fine too because maybe you have the breeding side that you can fall back on but just having some kind of plan so for me that's kind of the other business ventures and I want to have some way to be able to say okay if I have to step back I'm gonna have a plan of how I can step back and this is gonna be okay for me it's not gonna not gonna set me back any and I'm not gonna have to play catch up and you know be working over time to try and get back to a stable point. Mm -hmm. Those are such excellent points. And I think your points about diversifying and, and some parts have to make money, but not every part and they can work synergistically together. So thank you for sharing that. My final question for you, and it's not super serious and it's just meant to be a fun one, but what is something, um, that people don't ask you? I mean, you get interviewed all the time and for good reason, but like, what is, what is something that people don't ask you that you wish they would, that you wish people would know? I don't know. I feel like they ask everything. <laughs> but, like, and we were visiting about before this interview that you, kids have no, like, shut off. Like, kids nowadays, they just say anything they want to say. So, you know, no one typically asks me about my political affiliations. Um, that's probably best. You know, no, nobody really asks me, like, what I sh they should do to raise their kid. They usually ask, where do you get your two-year-olds? Like there's a magic wishing well where sister came from. And I, I sometimes wish they would ask like what my advice would be on these young kids because they come to you what they, what they do ask I should say is um, how do we find this horse and how do I make her be you like they've got some teenage daughter and she's standing right there and they're like how do I make her into the next Haley Kinsel and I'm like 
don't. Yeah. And the only thing I can say is answer that question. But I, sometimes I wish they would ask, like, what would you be doing if you were 16? And I would say the same. I wish she was doing what I was doing then. I was working really hard. I had a good horse, but not an expensive horse. I had just a nice horse that I was just working my best at. Mm -hmm. I had to improve because sometimes the horse doesn't improve. They are what they are. So to get faster, you have to be better. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was focused on school. Like I had this, you know, deal coming down from my parents. If you're going to college and you're you're gonna have a career and whatever it is, you're gonna figure it out and they allowed me to figure that out in the barrel racing world but um and I you know that may not be the route for everyone but having some kind of a plan that is not let's groom this child to be the next great barrel racer I think that's the silliest thing ever and I really wish people would take their focus off of it so I do I think that if they were to ask me like I think I wish they would ask well, what is your advice on what to do with a kid right now? Because it's never what they think it's going to be <laughs> or it's never what they actually ask. And I do think that could that could help develop a lot of kids. Um, I think there's a lot of girls that probably love barrel racing, but they may not love it enough to be a career. Mm -hmm. And that is something you should learn early, mm -hmm. and early as you can. It's a lot easier to learn it now um, than to learn it later on in life when you've poured all of your time and energy into it and you figure out, you know what, I want a different job or I do want to go to college or something else. So just to keep you know, working on being well-rounded so that everyone has options. A lot of people are meant to train horses and a lot aren't. And so uh, <laughs> allowing your kid to figure that out would be ideal. I mean, Mike, <clears throat> excuse me, mic drop moment. That is such good <laughs> advice. That is so good. I know everyone watching will appreciate that so much. Um, yeah, we just appreciate you and affirm you. You do so much for the industry. Obviously an incredible talent and incredible horse that you are a steward of but um also just affirm the person that you are you're you're smiling you've had a great attitude um yeah just keep keep it up keeping you keeping in a light you know what i mean you're such a a witness um for the lord and and yeah just a great example of someone who's doing what they love but you understand the greater purpose of it too so thank you for making time for this interview and good luck this week thank you i appreciate it. i've been really blessed to be able to do what i get to do every day and to come here so i'm just glad i get a new place to do it <laughs> awesome well thank you again back to the barrel racing <laughs>